Hello and welcome back to part two of lasting. So in part one we did the lining of the shoe, lasted the lining, and in part two <laughs> we're going to be lasting the upper, so getting all this upper leather pulled over the shoe. We'll also be putting the toe stiffener in as well, so I'll show you how to do that first. What I should just say is that I did by way of preparation a couple of days ago I just pulled this leather over the shoe last fairly gently and popped some nails in because I thought it would start to help the leather to acclimatize and take the shape of the last. I think that's not a bad idea if you can. So this is what the shoe at the moment looks like from the underside with the leather just pulled in and as you can see I've just put a few tacks into position and the leather's been sitting there getting sort of used to this new position. I'm going to undo that now so that we can get the toe reinforcing cap in. And these nails are only very lightly tapped in so I can easily pull them out and reuse them. Where possible, I want to try and reuse the lasting nails. So it helps not to drive them in too hard. What I can do once I've got these out, I can roll the top back and get the toe cap into position. So if you remember, that's the lining that we lasted in part one. And I can now roll that whole toe cap back totally. This is the toe cap stiffener that we made in an earlier video. And it's all nicely thinned at the edges. I can place that on here turn it over and start to get an idea of where it's going to go. So I'm just going to mark in a couple of lines roughly where I want this toe cap to actually sit. So it will go up like that, fold over and all get folded in. Now to make it more pliable what I'm going to do is soak it and then it will make it a lot easier to get over the top of the shoe here and it will mould to the shape of the shoe. So I'm going to soak it, nail it down and then let it dry and it will take the form of the shape it's been stretched to on the last. So I'm just using a ordinary like plant sprayer here and just letting that leather soak up some of the water it's fairly thin so it shouldn't take long to soak through. In fact you can see it already on the other side where I've skived it. It's come through and even in the middle it's coming through. So I'll give that just a few minutes to soak through and then I'll be able to start attaching it to the toe cap position on the shoe. So I've just popped the nail through in the top here to keep the top of the toe in position. And then just checking over it roughly up to my lines going to fold the top in. I won't push or pull on it rather too hard but I will still pull on it to get it over the front of that toe and then pop a tack in, the lasting nail. And pull it nicely over and pop it in. What I'm trying to do as I do this the whole time is to make my tucks as even as possible and then I can get them worked down to virtually nothing. And you can see already it's taking the shape quite well. I can see with this lasting that the more you do the more you get a bit of a feel for how far to take it each time, where to try and put the sort of evenness of your folds to break them down and it does work quite well. It's certainly <laughs> one of the things I hope to learn with this shoemaking project was to generally just become you know upping one's game the whole time with general leather work and there's no doubt about it things like wet molding now I would approach it slightly differently and I think get it even better so it's it's good what you're constantly refining and honing your skills which I quite like. 
Let's hold that one down. Set. Because the sole of this shoe, the midsole, is quite thick, obviously I can put the nail, the lasting nails in about four or five millimeter and I know that it's doing what it needs to do. So I'm trying not to get my hands in the way so you can see what I'm trying to do here. So I'll carry on going around this toe, but the idea is to try and get it sort of evenly round and then I'll obviously get rid of any little ridges with the cobbler's hammer and um, I can get between nails as well. And it's amazing how this further gets everything quite nice and flat. You can probably see there that's beginning to get nicely tucked around smooth on top and I'll obviously be letting this dry. Okay so that's the toe cap in position. It'll be obviously all trimmed round when I do come to fit it. So I've got two of those now. I'll show you the other one. So that's the other one. Wanted to show you uh, something which is quite interesting here go a bit wider out I think. And it's this rather old shoemaker's tool called a, either a um, Cordwainer's dog is one of the names it goes by lots of names. Cordwainer's dog, a Cordwainer's crab or lobster or a waste lasting tool and basically a waste lasting clamp basically it is just that it is a clamp with like dog's teeth and it pulls the shoe in I'll just undo it these are pretty rare but they're rather clever little tools so what you've got here are a couple of jaws and they grip the leather around the waist of the shoe where it's often a bit more difficult to pull it all in and then you turn the handle and it winds it all in. So I'll show you what I mean. This one, when I got it, it was so quite rare. It was so rusty. I had to put it in one of my buckets of soda with a battery charger. I have popped a video up on that, how I get rust off of particularly bad tools or particularly rusty tools. And you turn the handle and it draws it in. And it's great because it really does get the leather pulled over the last, particularly in this area where it would otherwise be quite difficult. You can see it's straining there, but it's a great way to get it all like pre-tensioned as well. So I'll leave that on there at the moment. But yeah, it's quite fun to get that. I'm always on the lookout, as you know, for anything a bit unusual, and that certainly met the bill. So, um, Cordwainer's dog or lasting clamp or waste clamp. So I'll, I'll, as I say, I'll let that dry out and then tomorrow I can hopefully get it glued on that toe cap. So I'll pull that back at the moment, get some air at it. So I've left this overnight and it actually feels pretty solid actually. So what I'm going to do is remove the nails from here and then I will be able to glue it down firmly. I'll trim it and hammer it into shape. So I've just pulled the nails out and there you are, it really does form a solid toe cap. So this is a reinforcing, so I'm going to trim it round, I've just drawn a little line. Now technically for this I should be using a shoemaker's paste. Uh, sort of like a starch type paste and I know some people even have their own recipe for making it you can buy it commercially I don't um, have access to any at the moment so I'm going to use some aquilum but the idea of using a proper shoemaker's paste is it makes the toe more breathable so it's not a bad idea if you can get hold of it So 
So I'm just using the hammer to try and stretch and get the um, lever to go over my last. I'm just sort of doing a top sky on here to get all of this going down to like a feather edge. Always very particular about putting some of these really sharp knives immediately back into their holder once I've used them. Just really a safety thing, but they're so sharp you do have to be careful. So I'm just getting everything nice and sort of leveled down. Glue on, just done a final check of the position on my last and I will start now lasting away. Start at the toe as usual, pulling everything over as best I can. So a similar arrangement to doing the lining. I'm starting by getting my nails in the toe area. Then I'll go on and get them down just across the, like the ankle bones and then down towards the waist and then the heel. And all the time I've got a nail in the back here just to stop everything sliding around. And what I'll do in a minute, I'll just hit the top of the shoe Try and get all my lever knocked down flat into position. So just use my cobbler's hammer and try and get everything going down nice and flat, and get it into shape. So I'm sort of trying to deflect it with my hammer. And then on the this side, I'm trying to get it as flat as I can everywhere. And the hammer does really does help to get this down. And while I'm not quite so happy about it, what I'm doing is basically taking the nail out and having another go at a bit more positioning. But all the time, I'm essentially trying to get rid of these folds. And if you pull it and stretch it, and then get another tack down, it's amazing how each time you do that, you can sort of pull and stretch and get rid of a bit more. There'll be some still when I'm finished. I think this lever is probably a tad thicker than may have been ideal, but it's perfectly all right. It's going to be a nice strong outer lever. You see there I've got a bit between two nails and I'm just again trying to pull it in with my pliers, get it all flattened down, get a tack in. And like that, wherever there's a bit of a gap and one can get the pliers in, get the pliers in, give it a little bit of a, like a twist to try and flatten it out and then get a nail in. And very quickly, one's beginning to get it. I'm pleased actually with all of this that I left an inch and a half lasting allowance because actually I think I, ideally I almost could have had a little bit more. I mean, it's pretty well spot on but you wouldn't want less. You could be really struggling at this stage. I always, when I see pictures of lasting, think, oh, there's so many nails. Surely you don't need all of those nails. But actually doing it now, I can see why people do have a lot of nails, because you can get your work flatter and flatter by holding it in. I've got a bit of a big tuck up here which I'd quite like to try and reduce but I am beginning to run out of space I may have to take nails up again I think I will and try and do a little bit more get try and get two folds where I've got one just getting down in size if you sort of pull and twist on the pliers it's amazing how one can get those bigger folds out the way a bit more and try and squash in a couple more nails with this one. This is where the smaller lasting pliers really are worth having. 
I imagine if you're doing boots and big things, you probably want the larger lasting pliers. But I'd say if you're thinking about getting some, look for Visa Number no. Two, um, George Barnsley. I'd say look for something which isn't too bulky in the front. So again, trying to get this down and flat, and give it a little encouragement with the hammer. That does work quite a lot. So again, some of this will get trimmed off and it will get glued down once I'm satisfied I've got it totally okay at this edge. So I'll carry on back here now. I should have been back here a bit earlier, but I will come back to that. But I feel I've got that now in the right sort of ballpark. Being critical, I think a little bit more of that. And I'll try and pull it when I come around here and maybe take the nails out of this end and try and pull them in a bit more. But it's such a wonderful I could do it with the lobster. I might be able to. I might try that. I'll get a couple of these in the back and then maybe put my clamp on here. This clamp obviously isn't essential, it's just I have it and um, therefore I'm using it, but you could manage quite happily without it. I just like um, old tools, as you probably gathered. So that's what it looks like from the upper. And this is what it looks like underneath. And what I'm gonna do now is let this rest a little bit, and then I'll put a very light bit of glue along my feather, along that wall, and you know, just lift up bits, put a bit of glue down, Put it down and try and get it a bit flatter still on the second stretch down but like that i can then trim it and it will be glued up ready for sewing with the welt so i'll put a bit of glue down spread it along and then just renail it and then i'll give it a final trim and i'm just using a little cotton bud here to try and just spread it around the glue around a bit so i'm just using at the moment some ordinary white glue on this i don't want the glue going everywhere but i want it to be enough glue to get it sticking and then once i've done that small section pull it back press it down and carry on so i'm just trying to it's another get me another step closer when the glue has dried I'll then trim the upper leather right back to my feather line. So at the moment I have glued down from there roughly right the way down to here. So I'll be able to do the front bit next and the heel. It does take quite a long time all of this. And I know I'm being slow but it's still a lot of work however you do it. So I've glued down these middle sections and I've now just trimmed them as well. So I'm back to my original feather edge wall here. So this is what the toe looks like opened up again. And I've just put some white PVA glue in there. So I'm now going to re-pin all of that down. So it can be gluing and drying. And then I'll be cutting it obviously up again to that feather line at the front there. So I'm now going to take these nails out as all this has been glued down and give it a final trim up. And what I'll need to do is, well, I've got bits of like puckering. I'm going to have to try and flatten it down a bit more where I can and file it down or cut it down. But that would be the last thing completed. So I'm just doing the final trim round at the moment. So I'm trimming up to my feather edge. Just on a safety point, do, if you're using a knife like I am, make sure you've got very good protection. So I've got two thicknesses of sturdy apron here um, covering my legs. And then I've got this sandbag as well. So if my knife does slip, I'm not going to get my legs. Obviously you always cut away from yourself, but do take care. And at this point, I'm going to also just remove these um, lasting nails, which were holding the uh, midsole down to the last because I don't want to forget to take them out. There we are. So out they come.
Right, there you are. So I've roughed it all a little bit as well. So that's what it looks like from the top. And that's what it looks like all glued and lasted down. So as I say, the next job will be I'll be fixing or sewing on a welt around this edge up to the heel and then I'll be fixing using wooden pegs what's called the rand it's like a horseshoe shape of leather to even up all of this around the heel area I'll be putting a stiffening shank of wood or metal in here and I'll be once I've done the welting I'll be leveling all of this up with leather and cork filler in this gap then I'll be ready for the outsole that's a general so still a fair way to go on all of this but I'm pleased to get it to this stage um, certainly feel I've learned quite a lot doing that not perfect by any means but it's getting there okay thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye, -bye then